Welcome to Talking Jazz. My guest today is drummer, composer, educator, Josh Roberts, also a multimedia specialist. And Josh has been playing with us for several years now, and he moved to New York a few years ago and is really making a mark in the industry. And I'll let you in a minute tell your awards too and how you've been running up the polls and, and getting endorsements. But it's a great example of, of one of our young new talents making a mark in the industry. So welcome, Josh. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on here. It's a pleasure. It's great to talk to you. So I want to start, you know, we've been playing together in, in one of our groups called The Time Flies, which yep. kind of was your idea anyway <laughs> <laughs> to come up with the name. And we had a title for the band, so we had to make a band. Yum. And, <laughs> and so we'll, we'll go and, and work up towards uh, listening, actually, to one of our tunes that we recorded together, Promises of Spring. But mm. I wanted to ask you first, you know, Give us a little bit of synopsis of your background and why the drum? I love that. So I grew up in Midwest, Missouri, and I was a pa and still am a pastor's kid. So grew up in church, of course, and playing. Well, before playing in church, there was a place. Basically, I grew up in the Ozarks, which if anyone has seen, it bounces between the number one, two, three Netflix series in the world and the country is called Ozark. And that takes place and filmed about an hour where I was born. So it's randomly been kind of a famous area now. But uh, so that gives you an idea. That's where I was born, kind of country. And I grew up in the church. And honestly, it is kind of the stereotypical story of I remember the day I was in the room and they were rehearsing and I could just feel the drums. I remember specifically being able to feel the kick drum and the snare. And it was this all embodying, it was a sonic experience, but also a physical experience. And to me, there was no other instrument. The bass, you could always feel. The guitar was the sonic experience, but the drums was everything. And it just kind of drew me. And I never stopped looking at the drummer and then my parents noticed and so they're like oh would you like a drum set and so $75 we got this piece of junk drum set and a couple teachers and basically only about three teachers my whole life growing up and then I was in shows I was playing in shows there in Branson Missouri and really was not considering college until I swear they were some type of guardian angel or something. This uh, older gentleman, he was, he turned out to be a mentor of mine, but he came to a show and I think he just saw me young talent and they were always like, here's the voted best drummer in Branson. I was the youngest always in any show. And, but he pulled me aside and he said, you need to think about college at some point. And I was just like, no, you know, why, do, why should I think about college? I have, and at the time, you know, I was making, I didn't have to go anywhere and you would just go up, play a show. But I, but I was adventurous and I was just like, okay, let me just audition at Indiana. And, and so I ended up, as soon as I auditioned there, I had that feeling that I always tell people when you're looking at a college or something, you'll probably have a feeling that's like, this is home. This is where I know I should be when you get on campus or something. And the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll recount some of that history, too. I remember you mentioning you went on a tour early on. Who was that with? That was with the Rankin Brothers, mm -hmm. was probably, yeah. And I actually left high school. Right. Uh, Yep. So I was homeschooled my whole life. And then I went to public high school, freshman, sophomore, and junior years. And I was just a restless soul. And I just, I've never really valued any constructive, what the world kind of constructs of education or anything. And I'm just kind of like, I never bought into that. And I was like, I talked to my parents and we, we had this tour lined up with these Rankin brothers, a country act. And I said, I wanted to leave high school and I never got a GED. I never ever got anything, but, but they allowed me my senior year. I never went back to school and 
I took some community college classes, which kind of equivalated me to kind of finishing a high school education. So I think in their minds, they had peace. They're like, if you ever wanted to apply for a GED, then you could get it. But then once you go to college, then it's forget about it. You don't. Right. You were in. Yeah. yeah. You got to IU and I found this freshman who was drumming <laughs> like a master. And I said, I want that drummer. <laughs> Years late. I mean, you got me early and we yeah. never, we have never stopped ever since. It is the longest standing project I've ever been a part of is our project. That is for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Before we get more into it and talk about all of our adventures, <laughs> well, let's check this tune out. So this is actually one, one of my compositions, mm -hmm. Promises of Spring, that we recorded on the last Time Flies release that came out last year. And why did you pick that one? A couple of reasons. One, I've always liked it because it, it is like a Herbie Hancock kind of butterfly, kind of like, I love I love the feel of it. But it to me, it was always this kind of hopeful, I don't know, whenever we play it, it was always in the set. It felt like, a, okay, we're going to either be back in this crazy country, Baku or wherever we're at. It was just a feeling of hope. And that's what, that's what I kind of wanted right now anyways, was this, you know what? We have promises that we will be able to do it again at some point. So I like that. I, I appreciate it. You know, it's not an easy tune. So when we'll listen to it, you know, it's, it has a seven beat and that's not your usual march to it with two feet thing. <laughs> you, have, you have to count a little bit and then we'll switch <laughs> off in, in different meters. Josh came up with a really, really cool groove to it.
That was Promises of Spring featuring Josh Roberts on drums from the 2019 The Time Flies Power Lines recording. Absolutely cool seven groove and everything in between. You know, something that's so special about working with a good drummer is that you come up with something cool and unique. And, you know, it's, it's, it's tricky when you lead bands on figuring out how much guidance you give and how much guidance somebody needs in terms of coming up with parts. And what I really like is if somebody takes the cue and, and just runs with it. I Well, same as on my end, which is really nice, is, is having that flexibility. And, and that's a special thing too, I think, about playing together so long and having a group that has transformed and morphed for so long is that trust is there, our style, we have a style, we have a sound that we've kind of built in there and it is nice. On this next one, which is called Where's My Form. So this is actually a tune that, that Peter wrote. And it has this weird 6-4 combo groove <laughs> that you probably have a better word for it on <laughs> what to call it exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a, it's basically a drum and bass. Yeah, it's like a drum and bass, but in three, which is interesting. So, and on all this, basically, I, I should also preface that I try, I, I mean, I look at the charts and whatnot but I try to just internalize it as quick as I can because sometimes too the charts maybe if the charts can look like one thing but especially on Peter's tune sometimes Peter it's like a longer phrase you know and it's actually kind of something else that's not the way it's written so basically a drum and bass in odd times so it's challenging music. You all write challenging music. Well, I mean, that's fun to hear. I mean, that's something we set out at the beginning because we're children of the 70s and the 80s where jazz merged with all these rock groups and merged into some new directions. And it was exciting, you know. We, we heard all these groups, Weather Report and John McLaughlin's Vahavishnu Orchestra and Return to Forever. And they were brand new at that time. They just came out. It's like hearing the top 40 right now. <laughs> for us, just like you were drawn to the drums, we were drawn to these groups who, who were killing it. And, and whatever you hear at that time really mm -hmm. creates and marks your path forward and how you write and how you compose. And it's yep. difficult to find people that are willing to do that because it takes work. <laughs> it does. But if you stay on something and develop it, I our group, I think, is a showing of that is that if you really stay with something and, and keep a group together and just persist we've done some amazing things we've traveled and it's been incredible so peter says that every year at tax time he needs to divert himself to do something else because he hates doing taxes and putting in all these forms so he usually starts writing some music so there's a tax tune every year and this was one of peter's tax tunes where's my form a few <laughs> years ago <laughs> this is also from the initial time flies really can be found there and we'll post a cover where we'll listen to it but listen for this really cool 6-4 groove and mm -hmm. some super fancy drumming again by Josh <laughs> here we go
That was Where's My Form from The Time Flies, the earlier release, actually several releases and we'll, we'll post. And my guest today is Josh Roberts, drummer extraordinaire, now in New York. We didn't even get from Indiana to New York yet, but Josh is in New York since several years. He completed his master's at the new school and New York University, but yeah. At New York University and is making his mark there. Actually, you were recently named in a drummer poll. Tell us more, more about that. Yeah, in Modern Drummer Magazine, which is mm -hmm. essentially, yeah, the definitive kind of drummer, drummer source editorial source for us. They have the up and coming awards every year. And I placed third for 2020 up and coming drummer in the world. So that's third. amazing. That's a really, <laughs> really great honor. It was. Thank you. And you've also been really good about getting some endorsements, right? How, how you have accumulated so far? I started going to NAM, the, which yep, stands for, let me see if I get this right, the National Association Music Merchants. Manufacturers. Merchants. Yep. Merchants. Yep. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it was actually, it's already been canceled for January 2021. But mm -hmm. usually it's a huge meeting melting pot of all brands and all association, everything that is music music production in Anaheim, California, just outside of LA. And it's a great place or it's a great time to just go and meet everyone and just get to know basically the artist relations and get to know the companies. Because I always say that's important. Like, don't just try to get free stuff, you know, really, you love Casio and you love their equipment and the way they fund education and have funded so many things for you and stuff. So that's what you do. You look for a company that sees your vision, I think. And so I was able, I was privileged to sign on the Vic Firth for Sticks, which is really great. Some smaller company, 64 Audio In-Ears. And I do a lot with the Soundbrenner, which is like a vibrating metronome. And it's kind of fun. And I've shot quite a few videos for them and done quite a few things for that. And I'm in conversations with some groups and some brands. Now is an interesting time because I'm getting emails from a couple of the brands that I've had notifying me that my artist relations rep has had to be laid off and whatnot. And so it's a tough time. It's definitely not a, a time I feel like when companies are maybe trying at the moment to get to expand their roster, but I've just done a bunch of stuff with that and with Sunhouse Percussion, which is which is a little bit of a, a deep cut in the percussion world, but it's basically this, this technology brand that is using drum sensors and triggers to basically trigger a bunch of things like vintage synths and whatever, but in a rhythmic kind of way. And there's some of that stuff on my Instagram, some things that I've done and will be doing, but I teamed up with them and then a drum company called Reverie Drum that does custom drums. 
and uh, I met them at NAM. I met the owners at NAM, and we really hit it off. And they said they want to build one of my custom kits, and so they just came in uh, about a couple weeks ago. So many doors have really opened up. Well, it's a, usually a combination of luck and being proactive and setting some goals and 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 going for it. You know that makes the difference. And yeah. the old adage of sitting at home and waiting till the phone rings. It just it, nope. it it does not work in this business. You have to be proactive and you have to know what you want. That is true. That that old you have not because you ask not or whatever that is. It kind of that sometimes is the thing of just like well I was just recently approached by a musical director about a music project and there's a known dancer, creative dancer, creative artist in New York. He just reached out with an email and said, "I love this that you do, and I know that we can do this and we can do this together." And they were just like, "Sure, let's contract it and let's do it." And so, yeah, I think in this time, it's a lot of just ask, you know. And the worst thing they can say is no. And I've heard no's. I've heard plenty of no's. We all have. You know, there's no problem with a no. <laughs> yep, it doesn't yep. hurt. You just move on to the next thing. So let's talk about your process of making covers because you've been really successful with several of those and not not just in working the media but just doing it in a really creative way so explain to us a little bit what is it making a cover and how how do you do that so and for those who may not know a cover a drum cover specifically is basically taking a popular song or any song that pre-exists and doing an original part to it I so like the you know vocals whatever so drums is obviously what I've done. I kind of looked at well I should say first the first cover that I put out which went really viral and to the point when I was even when I moved to New York I went to a couple rehearsals at Juilliard and I never attended Juilliard but the rehearsals were there and I had a couple people come up to me and they said wait you're the drummer in that Flintstones video right and I was like wow. this is crazy from Indiana to Manhattan somebody recognizes you and that's that's the web but what it was funny what it was is that first video I did was a Jacob Collier most jazz people know the phenom that is Jacob Collier he did this it was a while ago he did that song Flintstones our you know commonly known song I remember just hearing it and I'll I'll kind of talk about when you want when you want to go into process I'll, I'll talk a little specifically but I remember hearing it hearing a part just kept listening to it over and over and over and kind of hearing the drums in my head and kind of oh oh this is interesting he displaces this and then in the bridge he does like he climbs up progress like okay this is interesting and so I went into there's a recital hall we have called Ford Hall and one night it was late, I remember, and I think it was in the summer, and I knew no one would be there. I was still around on campus, and I unloaded my drums, and I, I set it up in there, and all I had was a Zoom, old Zoom, super outdated now, one of Peter's, like kind of what your husband Peter has. I put it up right above my, my hi-hat symbol, and I didn't do any sound EQing. I didn't do any color grading, nothing fancy that I do now that I feel like you have to do to kind of keep up on today, but and I remember, oh, literally maybe 50 takes. I mean, it took forever. And the reason, one reason it took forever was I wanted a continuous take. I didn't want to just get it up to this point, you know, and then cut it. I felt like I really just wanted a legit, no metronome, just me and the recording, boom. And so I got it. And then this is funny, actually another student, I was editing it and in the process of gonna put it up and another student at IU, not many people know this, actually put it out first. And I saw it and I was like, oh, it wasn't quite as fleshed out as mine was, but I was, so I messaged him, Ruben, he's a great drummer in LA right now. I messaged him and was like, hey, love your cover. Just letting you know, I spent a lot of time on mine and I am gonna put it out. And he was like, totally cool, awesome. You know, we'll, we'll support each other, like whatever. So I put it out, it was on a Saturday morning. And I remember Sean McGowan, a pianist that was through our program. I remember he post, he reposted it on Facebook. At the time, I wasn't even on Instagram. I just took Facebook. He reposted on Facebook and then like a couple other people reposted it. And then before I knew it, it was like 35, 40, 50 reposts, which just sent the views kind of through the initially through the roof. And I think that helped the video kind of get on trending kind of areas. And then now it's still it's which you know, there's definitely videos out there with many more. But 
300,000 views. And I'm just like, yeah, I connect with so many people over this video. But the process though was essentially kind of that. I have done a lot of, one thing that I think is interesting to my even drumming in general is a lot of times I will, I can hear it in my head and I'll really even come up with a groove and come up with the whole concept to it in my head. And I, and I try to be very sonically aware. I, I hope if there's one thing that people can, when they, when we get done playing or whatever is, I try to mix myself with everybody. You know, when we play and it's your solo, t I'm never, I hope I'm never like on top of the mix. I always try to just be a member, an active member, but just a member of it, you know? So I was just hearing the song and I was like, okay, the first of it, it's like, okay, it's a, it's a dotted eighth note. It's displaced by a 16th note. And then it's going to go into swing. And then it's going to go a big three, four, five, six, seven. And then there's a break. And it, it's some crazy weird stuff. But I was like, okay. I practiced a decent amount on it. But then I remember just like getting in there and saying, okay, I think I'll record it. Oh my goodness. It took so many recordings. There was a cleaner. I remember there was a cleaner that came through. And then he finally left. And I was like, ugh. But that's basically the process is it's like I tried to find my niche in it instead of there's a bunch of drummers that just played a pop music and I was like what if I just basically really over arrange a song on the or over orchestrate a song on the drum set to where when he's gone like lyrically then I can you know I can just basically double I'm doubling a lot of melodies that's basically what I'm what I'm doing and then when there's when there's moments of rhythmic counterpoint, oftentimes I take that to try to impose another meter on it. And so it gives you this weird kind of feeling in the middle of it. So yeah, that was that cover that led to a Tigran Hamasian cover who Tigran was just kind of getting on the scene back then. And then I recently, and it's been four years I noticed, but I recently put out Fascinating Rhythm by Jacob Collier. I did this, I did a similar cover thing. And it just bringing me back on because I, I think I want to get back on YouTube and uh, but I did the same thing I just started listening to it over and over sometimes when I'd go on a run and we know about runs we can talk about runs but I would just hear it and mentally yeah mentally because it kind of goes on that if you can sing it mm -hmm. or you know whatever in your head then at least you're definitely much closer to being able to play it and so I could usually like and sometimes I could sing it, I could hear the drum beat, but I couldn't quite play it. So I'd have to figure that out. That was how I did the first cover. It's interesting because, you know, I just talked to Sherry Miracle. She talked about Ari Hornig and how he plays melodies on the drums. He's when the saints on, mm -hmm. on the drum thing. And, and she was talking about how the new directions for drumming right now is, is really to be that melodic drummer not just okay let's keep a beat and just keep it moving but integrating with the band and 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 playing these melodies along and that's the fascinating part i would say you know that's that's a good intro to to take that in so we have the audio recording of this video and everybody can find it on youtube it's jacob collier doing the flintstones but it's the josh roberts cover so go ahead and find it but here is the audio so the the drum part is the original part that josh edit here awesome. we go
Roberts cover of the Jacob Collier's version of the Flintstones. This is an interesting phenomenon. So this is something you can find on YouTube. Josh got 300,000 and more views. And you would think, wow, with such a success on YouTube, there should be some income. But the way the music industry is structured, it, it doesn't quite work that way. The song is the Flintstones. So whoever wrote the Flintstones <laughs> is going happily to the bank because the songwriter and the publisher get it all. Now, those who make uh, performance versions of it, it's a river of pennies. It's an interesting new world that we're dealing with. Yeah. And it's usually all about creating opportunities, many, many different opportunities for, for other things. And a combo. Well, you know, talking about careers, I mean, that's an interesting transition, but the next tune listen to again is one that I wrote. It's another Time Flies recording. It's called Fly High. And I initially wrote that because I have a kid that goes to circus school and it's another one of those jobs where you don't have a job job from eight to five. All you can wish your kids say follow your dreams, fly high. Talking about it musically, you know, it's, it's another great example. And, and you picked it as one that we should listen to because it's, it's another combo of feels and meters. And I have this little 6-8 pattern interwoven with a swing 3-4. Maybe you have some insights on how you dealt with it or why you picked this one. Yep, I, correct. You're, you're saying it, you're giving me the intro. So often in our group specifically, and I think this takes years and years to really be able to play with somebody long enough to achieve this, but we've been able to kind of go in and out of swing and kind of a straight feel and sometimes like an in-between feel. And it's just so natural. And I don't even ever think about it. But when I listen back to some solos, it's like, oh, now we're kind of in a triplet thing. And then we go back into, I mean, even some of our other things, Rocky Bottom, whatever. And we're so connected that it does that. And I remember specifically when we first read this, I remember you giving me a, a bit of instruction, like the first of it was like swung. And I basically just kind of like came up with a bit of a hybrid. And it is, it's like almost like, kind of harkens my part that I did kind of harkens back to an elven sort of that that Jimmy Garrison Elvin McCoy Tyner and I guess Coltrane quartet that they would kind of go in between just simultaneous you know there'd be moments Coltrane would slam the bottom of the piano and they would just ting, 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 you know and you feel triplets just flowing through Elvin and everyone and that's kind of how I felt at the beginning of this and also I mean the thing that I love about your guys's music and your writing specifically is there really is so much image in it. I mean, if you really think of Zach flying around, and I, I think of those, the ribbons and the trapeze, like, you know, all the circus stuff, you need to create that on the drum set. And you're, you know, you're responsible for supporting if you're flying around and doing ribbons, and I'm just doing a meat and potatoes beat, then it's just not, I'm not going to be the air underneath you. you know? That's what everybody should imagine, all the ribbons. <laughs> Yeah, I'm yep. flying through the air. <laughs> that that's what it is. So let's give it a go. So this is our recording of a fly high from Time Flies recording.
That was Fly High with the Time Flies and featuring Josh Roberts on drums with very, very cool grooves. I've done several versions in the meantime, and it's interesting to hear the different approaches. So thank you for that really, really cool contribution. We'll get one more if we're going to do one more of your covers that you actually mentioned earlier. So you did another Jacob Collier song. And, and those who are not familiar with Jacob, he is probably one of the most phenomenal talents right now. There are he, not just musical talent. I mean, the way he arranges things with really thick harmonies and sings them all himself. And then he'll go to the piano and, and play like crazy, like a master. And, and then all the other instruments. I mean, he's just great visionary in terms of putting things together. So this was a cover of the old Gershwin song, Fascinating Rhythm, which of course should have some rhythm in it, right? That makes yep. sense. <laughs> So tell us a little bit how you put that whole thing together. Yes. Well, I had a lot of process before doing it of this whole, you know, if there's an incredible Batman movie or Spider-Man movie, does anybody ever really want to see the sequel to it? You know, do you put out another thing or do you just let it be what it is? And so I, I struggled with going back and forth of whether to ever put another thing out. And then I just realized you can really just never put that pressure on yourself. Like otherwise we would never have another Marvel movie. You know, they would just make one movie or Chick Corea could have stopped after a light as a feather or something like that, you know? No, you just do it and it's just different, but it's still great. And so anyway, so I was finally like, no, now I definitely want to do this tune. And what was interesting is you can really see, you can see what New York I think a lot of what New York kind of did to my playing, because it was basically, I moved to New York shortly after putting Flintstones out, and I'm sure any city, and just growing up and, and going through life experiences and, and still practicing, et cetera, et cetera, could definitely, is going to take your playing through transitions. But New York specifically, I think, kind of made me a little more assertive as a drummer, I think. I think in Flintstones, there's some moments where I'm kind of following the track, and in this one, I was never that way. I was just like, I told myself, I know I can do this. This is what the part is. Yeah, I can feel myself in the video, really. 
you just got to do you just got like I know that's what the part is I'm not waiting for the recording you know to do whatever but what I did do was I learned it took a few days I learned it then I just took a couple days I thought I could actually film it in a day did it for about six hours and I never got a take came back another day never got a take and then I remember going out of town first time since this pandemic and stuff I went upstate did a little concert and, it, and it's so good to just sleep on it. That really shows you, you know, I tell my students a lot to practice something, try to learn something, and then just sleeping on it and waking up the next day is just is so good for development. I came back, ended up being able to record it. And this time was a little different. So this time I have, you know, I have some lights and I have a new camera and I have some audio, but I still try to keep the integrity of not production, not rah-rah, just a nice clear image a nice room sound not really a studio hunkered down edited messed around with drum sound it's just very clean drum sound so but yeah I finally got it and it was also funny like technically I could definitely do more things because really on these videos I hear a statement and I say the statement in drum language you know and it was cool being able to see how my language has improved and I've gotten more advanced techniques or whatever you know that I could kind of flex on this a little bit more so that was basically it and then it was the reception of it you know you put it out and you're just like oh my god is the internet can be a piranha tank I mean you <laughs> there's people that just live their life from their computer and they don't think destroying somebody on the internet is going to mean anything but you know it's hard as artists especially it's hard not to put your sleeve out there but it was great I haven't knock on wood I haven't had any negative comments but you still have down arrows which is so crazy I don't understand that why you have down arrows on anything that's decent quality but but yeah so I I was able to do that and also I should say um, for some drum people out there actually just music nerds they might enjoy this the drum room that I have which I have here and so I have a one bedroom in Manhattan in wood basically 196 way up on the island I have a one bedroom and the one bedroom is a drum room now and it's actually it's like a it's basically a large drum isolation booth and uh, it's actually Nate Woods who Nate Wood is drummer for Kneebody, Wayne Krantz, a lot of that stuff and he did those famous four videos where he's playing bass in one hand and doing drums so I have the drum room that he did all those videos in. So you can see it. You can go onto YouTube, watch Fascinating Rhythm, Collier, Josh Roberts, and it's filmed in Nate Wood's old drum room. That's people ask me all the time, how do you practice? And because I mean, it's a small apartment. I've got people above, below, every side that you can imagine. And it's incredible, but it really does isolate most of it. And then I just shut the room up and hope for the best so before we dive in what's next for josh roberts you know after <laughs> after we can all do things again but what's what's your big goal and vision birdland jazz is actually starting to do like a live streamed video i'm not sure if you pay to see or what it is but thursday a group nick searley and lauren molina we're doing a show thursday i don't think it's going to be live i think it's going to just be filmed so we're doing a thing thursday with that i'm currently on a couple albums that'll be coming out that are on kind of gospel R&B charts and whatnot. And I have, this pandemic has obviously sent me into the, to the lab. And so I have kind of that new drum technology and of course, regular drum stuff. I've been working on recording and stuff. And so I'm trying to get another album. It's very due. It's been, oh, probably three years, I think, since I've my debut, my only album, which is Two Worlds. Every platform you can do. Josh Roberts, Two Worlds, recorded there in Bloomington at the studio out there. I'm basically trying, I'm, I'm thinking of doing more YouTube videos that kind of have that. And I have somebody that's showing me some streaming things. So you might be able to, I might start doing some streams and stuff. But as of right now, it's just, well, I am, I guess I could mention this. I, so I was supposed to be there doing, and I never announced this, but they're doing a remount of the 1980s Broadway musical Baby. And it's got a couple famous tunes, but they're doing it with Alice Ripley who's been Broadway for, I guess, years and years and years. They're doing an off-Broadway house, but it's already been approved for three extensions and possibly, you know, there's always the hope that it would transfer to Broadway. But we were supposed to start rehearsals the Tuesday, the day after New York 
officially shut down. So they're telling us October, that's doubtful, but that is supposed to be on plate. So for something regular, hopefully a remount of Baby with Alice Ripley. We will see. Time will tell. Maybe a Time Flies reunion. That's, <laughs> what, that's what I want next. <laughs> oh, that's definitely on the horizon. But you know, that, that, that's really cool. And, and it will come back. Broadway will come back. Yeah. That part of, of being on Broadway shows and having that opportunity is one of the ultimate highest dreams for every yeah. musician to achieve. And, and I'm so happy for you. That's, that's a really... Thank you. Really, really cool thing. Let's go ahead and have some fascinating rhythm <laughs> with Josh's original drum part. Thank you, Josh, for being my guest today on Talking Jazz. And I'm sure we will hear much more. So find this video on YouTube, Fascinating Rhythm, Jacob Collier Arrangement with Josh Robert Cover. I'm all a quiver. Bop, bop, bop. All the best you're making. The difference got to do when I'm always shaking. Just like a flavor. Each morning I get up with a song. I'm a flavor. I'm not in the work that's being done. I know that books are in the middle. But now you do. Don't bring something out. I'm so unhappy. I'm so unhappy. Won't you take me off? It's hard to run around. Super far away. We'll make it snappy. Oh, how I long to be the guy I used to be. I want you to stop taking on me Just like a flavor, like a flavor Each morning I pop with the song 
Speak up with a song. I know what could be done. I know what could be done. guest today was drummer, composer, educator, Josh Roberts. Tune in every Thursday at 11 a.m. and Tuesdays at 7 p.m. on WETF South Bend, Indiana, or find us online at WETFTheJazzStation.org. Previous recordings of interviews and music are also available on the Monica Hersick YouTube channel under Talking Jazz. Find M-O-N-I-K-A-H-E-R-Z-I-G and subscribe. Thank you for listening. <laughs>